All right, guys, so hopefully you have watched the first video in our series on After Effects and have begun to see a little bit about the layout of After Effects. In this video, we want to begin to actually look at our tool panel. And so I'm going to zoom in onto this so that you can kind of see what it is that we're doing here and actually begin to understand what we're uh, showing. So you'll see this first one here uh, is called our selection tool and it's used just like you would use any other arrow where you use it to point and click on things to select them to move them around and drag them. Next to that we've got our hand tool. This uh, tool is used uh, primarily if you have zoomed into something and then you need to pan around on that picture and be able to move you know where it is that you're looking at we would use the hand tool to kind of uh, move as we are zoomed into a picture or video. Next to that we've got this magnifying glass that we would use to zoom in on a picture. We've got the rotation tool next and with this one we would use this tool to actually rotate um, different objects that we put into our video whether that's shapes, text, uh, pictures, the video itself, whatever the case may be we can use the rotation tool to do that. Okay, so I kind of slid over so we can see a few more tools. This is called the Unified Camera Tool. We're going to skip that for now. Um, we probably won't use that too much um, in this one. Then next we've got this uh, box with the four arrows in it. Um, this is called the Pan Behind Tool or the Anchor Point Tool. And we'll use this one uh, fairly, uh, we'll use this one some as well. And this tool will be, it's an important tool to know. Um, often it's just called the Anchor Point Tool. Next to that, we've got our shape tool. Right now it's a rectangle, but remember, just like in Photoshop and Illustrator, if you see any of these tools that have this little triangle on the bottom corner, that means that there's other tools behind it. And so if you click on that, you'll see that we have some other shape options that we can draw uh, with as well. Next to that, we have the pen tool. And we will actually use the pen tool this, uh, with this program, and you'll see um, we'll use it to create masks and that will be something that we'll talk about in a few of our future videos. Next to that we've got our text tool and we'll use that to just like you would assume to write in text and to uh, type on our pictures or our video that we're going to use as well. And I'm going to slide over one more time. We then also have a few other tools. We won't use any of these tools too often, but I did want to just point them out too. We've got our uh, brush tool, we've got our clone stamp tool, and our eraser. So those should be familiar from Photoshop and Illustrator as well. We won't, really are not going to use those too much with this. Uh, this is our rotoscoping tool, and I do hope to really get into this uh, tool as well, and hopefully we'll be able to use that. But this is a pretty neat tool in that you can use it um, to highlight sections and then separate them from the background so that we can kind of make it look like um, there's space between or that we can put things in, uh, in front or behind of different things as well. And then a few other tools, uh, again, that we're not really going to get into um, in this class, but um, those are there as well. Okay, so that was a quick look at some of the tools. Um, you see that right now we do have a project going, but we don't have a composition. We don't have anything here either. So um, in our first video, when we took a look at the movie, you saw that we dragged it down and we hit this to create a new composition. We can do the same thing, but we just don't need to drag anything down there. And so we can click on that video, or that button, create new composition. We can give us a name, and maybe we want to just call this practice. Okay. And... We can leave all this the same. Um, this was what it was at for our last time. That's fine. Um, we can just keep that the same as well. And so now you'll see we've got this composition panel here with some things on there. We've got our composition here. What we want to do just to begin to actually practice it with this is to just draw a shape. So we want to come up to our shape tool, also called the rectangle tool. If we click and hold down, you see that we have our other options, very similar to Illustrator. So what I want to do is just draw a rectangle. And you'll see then that when I click on that tool and I have that tool highlighted and it turns blue, that I get some options again just like Illustrator. 
I get my fill color, I get my stroke color, I get the stroke width, and I can actually begin to draw shapes, much uh, similar to um, Illustrator. So let's just do this. Let's just draw a real quick shape, uh, just something like that. Whatever, doesn't matter what it looks like necessarily, just that we have a shape, okay? Now, when I do that, you'll see down at the bottom that it puts it in and it says shape layer one. Now, something that's gonna be really, really important to do in After Effects is going to be to name our layers. Um, we're gonna end up with a lot of different pieces in these and if we are not sure what our layer is, it can be real easy to get confused. So, what we'll do then is we wanna just click back on our selection tool and then come down here and select it and hit return on your keyboard. When you do that, then you'll see that it gives you op the option to type in there. So let's just name this red rectangle. And then hit return again and it will go in. That way, we know exactly what it is that we're editing because uh, we, you'll see it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of stuff in there and it can get confusing. So this will help us just to remember and to know what it is that we are editing when we do that. Okay, let's go ahead then and let's hit this down arrow and come down here to where it says transform. And from here now we've got a number of different things that we can do to transform this rectangle. We've got our position and so we can change the position of this in a couple ways. We can drag it and you'll see as we drag our rectangle around that this number is changing. So as we move across in the X axis, that that's moving, I'm, I am slightly moving it in the Y as well. So again, remember our X is horizontal and our Y is vertical. And you can see that this kind of acts as a coordinate grid and it shows where it's moving on there. We could also just type on it and if we knew a specific uh, place that we wanted it to be, we could type in the coordinates for it and that would um, move it directly to that uh, position as well. Okay, so we can change the position with that. We can also change the scale of it. Uh, so right now it's at 100% which is what it is when we drew that shape. We can come in here and we can change the scale of it. We could say we want it actually to only be 50% and it will change the scale down to 50% of the size that it was when we started. Now, if I don't necessarily want that, one uh, quick thing that we could do on our keyboard, we could hit Command-Z, and Command-Z will switch that um, back to how we started. Okay, But that's a kind of a quick and easy way to do that is to hit Command-Z. And then we can also rotate it. So let's say I wanted to rotate this 90 degrees. It's going to rotate it up there and put it uh, do a 90 degree rotation. Now you'll notice that it seemed to kind of like flip way up here. That's because our anchor point is set to the middle and so it's uh, rotating around there. If I want to change that so that maybe it just rotates on this point here, I can come up and I can click on my pan behind or you'll see that it says in parentheses anchor point and I can change what the anchor point is. So I'm going to click on that there and I want to change the anchor point to that one. Now when I go in and I hit 90, oops, okay. So I'm gonna click on this tool, the pan behind or anchor point. And right now, I, you see that I've got this little kind of like crosshairs looking thing. This is where the anchor point currently is set to. I can drag this around and I can move it. So maybe I want it to be right in the middle of my rectangle so that when I come down to my rotation I can put 90 and now it rotates it right around this anchor point. That's going to be a helpful tool to know because we may at times want it to rotate around a certain point around a uh, different axis and that is how we're going to be able to change that anchor point. You'll see also then that when I move the anchor point it gave it new coordinates so previously it was 0, 0. Now I get moved it and now it's in the middle um, 
to the middle of the rectangle and it changed my coordinates for my anchor point down here. And then finally, um, I can change the opacity of it as well. So uh, maybe I want to put it at 50%. Remember, opacity is um, how easily you can see through the object. So I could put it at 50 or I could put it at zero and you wouldn't be able to see it at all. Um, you can see that this is just the outline of the shape from where I have it selected. Okay, so 10% makes it very faded. So those are a few of the quick options and things that we can do when we are creating shapes or text or video, some of the options that we have. So your first goal for today is just going to be to draw a shape and then just kind of begin to play with some of these uh, different options underneath this transform category so that you can transform some of these different things and just really begin to see how that works. Okay, so go ahead and try that and see if you can get a shape to transform.